and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live. It is a pleasure to have you with us today all around the world. We welcome you to the program. We love having you here, and we hope you've had a spectacular day. And if you haven't, guess what? You know this is the spot on the dial. That's a real broadcast phrase, isn't it? Spot on the dial. <laughs> Talking like the television and radio host as ever I am. Good to have you with us here on the Gym Masters Show Live. And this is the spot on the dial or on the digital media or internet or wherever you're watching us from, on your tablet, on your iPhone, on your um, Chrome, uh, Google Chrome, on your PC, on your cell phone, on your television, wherever you are, it doesn't matter. The fact that you're here is what matters. So we welcome you. I'm your host, Jim Masters. A pleasure to have you here to put a smile on your face. The Jim Masters Show Live is all about light and levity and love. Or for those of you who follow the show regularly, I had a Freudian slip about a week or so ago, and we sort of created the word levity <laughs> when I said levity and love at the same time. And then the whole audience said, oh, we love that word. Keep that word, Jim. So it's levity here at the Jim Master Show Live. If you're just joining us for the first time, I'm a professional television and radio host and journalist, actor, voiceover artist and narrator, stage MC, writer, producer, worked on TV and radio for a long time. And we created this show, this uh, light, uh, inspirational, positive entertainment lifestyle talk show series, literally 10 weeks ago. And uh, the audience has continued to grow and uh, just send all kinds of love and comments and all kinds of roll up the sleeves and participate in so many different ways by hosting watch parties, by sharing the links, by telling other people, by commenting, by uh, spreading the word, by subscribing to the YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV, by liking the fan page at Gym Masters TV on fa TV and Facebook there, and all these cool things and just continuing to propel us, which I love. Again, I do this professionally, but when I decided to put this together uh, just 10 weeks ago, it has been extraordinary. So we thank you and you and you. And as we always do, and I know my special guest, you see her name right there on the bottom. She's a dear friend and uh, we met at, uh, well, actually we've known each other prior to that, but we had an opportunity to break bread last at, of all places, the phenomenal Friars Club in New York City. And talk about light, levity, and love, right? The Friars Club. Um, she's extraordinary, but she's a legend in the industry. And um, she's a Broadway and cabaret star. Yes, all of those things. Awards up, you know, left and right, up and down. And, uh, but more than all of that, She's a wonderful person. She's spirited, she's enthusiastic, she's passionate, she's loving, she's endearing, she's engaging. She's very talented. When she takes the stage, everybody just sit back and enjoy. But she's got a lot of heart and a lot of soul. And I love people like that. As a creative person myself working you know, in this industry, I love when I have an opportunity to engage with people who do what they do, not only because they love it, but because they care and they wanna inspire others and they're communal. They wanna connect with people and lift them up through their art, through their work, through their science, through whatever it is they do. And we have a bevy of guests that come on this broadcast to share their personal stories, to share their lives, their tales, uh, to perform, to share their experiences, to communicate with me and to communicate with you. And I think that's a beautiful thing. If you're just joining us, this show is filled with amazing guests. We also go on location. We've done food and cooking segments and in-studio segments and a whole host of cool things. We're on seven nights a week, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Did I actually sign up for that? <laughs> Seven nights a week? Yes, I did. And uh, we built this home studio using some of my uh, television background. And we are here to provide, again, nightly light, levity, and love through the resources of our studio here, as well as YouTube at Gym Masters TV. And you can find all of the archived episodes of this broadcast. We've had Rain Pryor, phenomenal dear friend, comedian, and wonderful playwright and performer. And she's working on uh, a television series with Lor Norman Lear right now. She's the daughter of Richard Pryor she was on. I mean, Austin Pendleton was on, Lane Bradbury. These are veterans um, in theater 
We had last night, we had David Bigelow, who is a child actor in Jaws, and now is work and has worked for public television for many years on American Experience and Nova Frontline with PBS, uh, his company. And he was on for an extended interview live from the Boston area, talking about the making of Jaws, being on set as a kid during the making of Jaws, Steven Spielberg, uh, incredible 70s movie, but also uh, is working on a project called Making the Monster, which is talking about uh, the trials and tribulations of making Jaws. He was on last night. We had Mike Reese, Mike Reese, one of the senior writers for The Simpsons and uh, The Critic and so much more. Go back in the archives. There's a bevy of incredible guests that we have uh, to watch. And we're so excited um, to have Karen Mason on the show today. First, before we welcome her, I welcome all of you from around the world. We always do a toast on this show. So we toast with a little sweet libation here to you and you and you and you and you. We welcome you to the Gym Masters Show Live. Again, we're here nightly. And it's always an honor and a pleasure to have all of the regulars here and to welcome new folks from around the world. We do reach a global audience here on the program and we thank you for tuning in. Now, if you're just joining us, here is my sidekick. He's here every night. This is George Burns, of course, with Cigar in Tow. He's uh, <laughs> my aunt collected dolls and uh, got this when he turned 100, commemorative doll, and he is here just to say hi to everybody, make sure everybody's doing well. Yes, he says his good night, Gracie, at the end. He's looking pretty spry, isn't he? He's sort of my co-host, my Ed McMahon. Again, light, levity, and love, or lovity is the theme here at the Gym Masters show. And if I don't show these characters, sort of these cast of characters on the show, everybody posts and they're like, well, where are the characters? So Jeannie is in here as well. You could probably see her blinking. You see her blinking? She's in there. She says hello. Just check on her. I always like to check on her on the start of the show. Jeannie, you doing okay? Yes, master. So Jeannie is in there in the official I Dream of Jeannie bottle. This thing weighs a ton. Uh, She's in here and she says hello. She sends her love as well. And of course, there's a couple more quick characters here that we have to show because everybody loves them. Here is Silver. We got Silver on a television shoot in Europe. It comes from Switzerland, aptly named this canine Silver. So he's there and he sees everybody and he, he bids you well. Again, it's all about light, levity, and love, right? There's a theme going here. And of course, finally, everybody looks for Jimmy. And there is Jimmy. And Jimmy says, hello. <laughs> Again, if I'm ever out or away, we were away 4th of July weekend with the family along the coast. But Jimmy, maybe he can fill in. I think Jimmy would do a fantastic job filling in. So Jimmy says, hi. All of your cast of characters are here. And again, we do serious topics too. We, we go deep on this show. However, we like to start with uh, some light and levity. And if you're just joining us, we go big time too here on the Gym Masters Show live with lights camera and action so to officially start the show that's what we're going to do right now lights camera and action all right the gym master show live has officially begun how are you doing today hope everybody is doing well it's a real pleasure and a privilege to have you here as my guest tuning into the show from all around the world we'd like to start off quickly by saying hi to some of the amazing people that are watching right now and then we will welcome our phenomenal guest and um hello from Inner Kip, Ontario, Canada. Good to have you with us merlin i hope you're having a beautiful day thank you very much and Marianne Kelly from New Jersey. Nice to see you as well. Hello, Jimbo <laughs> uh, from Christopher Joseph in Ohio. Nice to see you there in Ohio. Thank you for joining us here live on our talk show series. Ernestine Webb in beautiful North Carolina. Hi, Jim and friends. Hope everyone is doing fine. We hope you are as well. We're doing great here at the home studio. And there's Willie in Holland in the Netherlands. Hello, Jim, I'm ready again. Nice show. And yes, I was telling my guest, Karen, uh, that I'm gonna be showing these flowers and these are for you, Willie, from Netherlands where you live because again, you take a nap in the day so you can wake up in time for our show at 1 a.m. in the Netherlands, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific here in the States, but 1 a.m. where you are. So some uh, Dutch, wooden hand painted tulips we got while we we're in the Netherlands on a TV shoot. Just for you, Willie, thank you again for being with us as well. Hi, Jim, can't wait. Uh, thank you very much. You have class 
Thank you. I appreciate that. A uh, little polish here and there. It doesn't go wrong. It's not old school, right? Modern sensibilities with a little old school polish. I got to get t-shirts to say that along with love it. Thank you, Marianne. We appreciate that. And um, that's very nice of you to say. And Jacqueline Vaccara Caputo. Hi, Jim and everyone from Brooklyn, New York City. Good to see you there in Brooklyn. Thanks for joining us and continue to spread the word. I know you've been doing that, Jacqueline. Tell all your friends and relatives there in Brooklyn and beyond. Jim Master Show is live every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Renee Jones Uscombe there in the breadbasket of our United States of America. Hi, everyone. She's there in beautiful Iowa. And we welcome everybody across the United States, Canada, Europe, Australia, uh, Asia, New Zealand, all around the world. Eileen Barker usually checks in from uh, the Midlands of Eastern Perth and Western Australia. And she always says, you have a ripper of a show. And I love that word. It's been very hot there in North Carolina. I heard that. Yeah, it's been warm here in the Northeast United States. This show generates out of the greater New York City area between New York and Boston in the USA. If you're wondering where we generate our broadcasts from, aren't you warm with three layers of, oh, you've noted. Wow, you're very astute there. Three layers, this, this, and this. No, we have the AC cranked on high. And uh, as you know, my look and my clothes uh, change based on content and episode and theme for the show. But I've done that in all my work in television and radio too. Um, on set, in studio, on location, I change everything based on whatever the project calls for. So uh, w check with me in an hour and I'll let you know if I'm hot. If I start to shine, that means we're getting hot, but that's that's passion, that's enthusiasm. We got the tulips coming in from uh, the Netherlands, from Willie and uh, Merlin. Nice to see you as well. And uh, Renny Katz is here. Rini, Rini, like teeny. I know. At first I said Renee, and then she said it's actually Rini. Just think of teeny. So teeny cats, but with the R, right? Am I, I'm getting it right. She's actually, she's a wonderful friend. She's joining us live on Thursday night. And we're going to have an amazing show for you Thursday night when uh, Rini Katz joins us here. And uh, she says hello to Karen and to me. And we say hello to you there. As you said, in the Midlands of... Uh, <laughs> Flushing, Queens, New York, in the Midlands, <laughs> not far from the Sphere, right? And City Field and uh, the Tennis Center. And let's see, Avril Britain in the United Kingdom. We say hello to you, Avril. Hi, Jim. I made it, managed to stay awake. Thank you for your live broadcasts. Yeah, because it's it's about 1.15 a.m. there in beautiful uh, United Kingdom, right? Uh, absolutely. And as I mentioned, my father's side of the family is English-Irish. And the, the English side came from Yorkshire. And the Irish side came from Ireland, of course. And uh, my mother's side is English, Swedish, and French. But nice to see you and continue to tell everybody in the United Kingdom uh, that we are here. They can also watch the shows in the archives at uh, YouTube at Jim Masters TV. Midnight there. That's right, midnight where you are, 1 a.m. in the Netherlands. So, so consider it a late night uh, gig that you're watching here <laughs> in the United Kingdom. Good to have you here. Something you love. Yes, we're definitely doing something you love. Workaholic, possibly. <laughs> I think a lot of us in this industry are. Uh, so very excited, going to be fantastic. Already is my friend, Ralph. Thanks for joining us as well. And uh, wow, so many interesting guests on your show. Heidi, good to see you as well. Uh, the last time I saw you was at that beautiful uh, waterfront restaurant, uh, saluting our wonderful Adele Wilson on her the launch of her book. And I emceed that event there overlooking the Manhattan skyline. I hope you're doing well. And uh, nice to see you too and smiley faces. And Kathleen is in New York City, the queen of queens. Nice to see you, Kathleen, as well. Uh, the two of us were on the Rachel Ray show uh, about a year or so ago, and that was really cool. I think I posted a picture of when we were on the Rachel Ray show. We had a good time. We'll have to do that again once studios open up. We were talking about drive-ins last night. Found out today they're showing the movie Jaws at our drive-in this weekend. That is cool. And on YouTube, Mary Pinto, hi to see you on uh, 
fabulous YouTube where the show is at Jim Masters TV. Nice to have you there, Mary Ann. Thank you very much for being with us. And you are drinking black berry wine. Very, very nice. And Marianne is in New York City, the Big Apple. And Jim is here. Good to see you, Jim. From one Jim to the next. You've got a really good name. From Nashville. Looking forward to the show. Great to have you with us. And I hope you can join us nightly at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Linda is here from Florida. Beautiful, sunny Florida. Nice to have you here. Yes, uh, Christopher, Willie is here. She chimed in earlier. And Isigari from Barcelona, Spain is tuning in. Nice to see you in Barcelona. Once again, Isi, we appreciate when you are here as well. Uh, Margie Inman, nice to see you in Vancouver, Washington. Our day, very, very busy, very busy day, but a beautiful day. And I hope your day was as well. And thank you for your kind comments all the time. I know you had posted that... Uh, you're in a lot of pain oftentimes. And when you watch this show, uh, the light and the levity and the way the show is presented and just some of the inspirational vibes that you get from the show, which I personally love presenting and through the guests and everything we do sort of takes the pain away for you during the time our show is on. And that is very beautiful to share. And I really appreciate your sharing that and uh, just keep with us here and we'll continue to try to Provide that light, uh, pain-free as best as we can here for you, Margie. Thank you very much for your uh, faithful loyalty as well. And um, nice to see you as well. And doing very well, Pamela. How are you? Wonderful evening. A marvelous guest. We're going to be talking. We're going to be sharing some fabulous music with you as well. Uh, we've got a legend with us. But more than that, we've got a wonderful human being with us, uh, Karen Mason. So... A lot of the intros are here. Thank you very much. Love Barcelona as well. It's good to have that slipped in as well. So my very special guest again is Karen Mason. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. I'm sure you know of her. I'm sure you've seen her perform over the years. But if you haven't, let me be the first to tell you about this extraordinary person. Um, she's not only a bevy of talent, she's a bevy of, uh, of love and passion and compassion. Tell you a little bit about her extraordinary background, and then I will be very happy to welcome her as my very special exclusive guest here on the Jim Masters Show Live. She has starred on Broadway, off-Broadway, television, and recording for a good long time, and she has a uh, few peers when it comes to ripping the roof off when her amazing voice uh, is belting out all kinds of beautiful sounds, knows no bounds. Theaterscene.net said that, uh, knows no bounds. Karen is a 13 time Mac Award winner and has won the Mac Award for Major Female Vocalist of the Year for six consecutive years and recently was a recipient of the 2019 Mac Lifetime Achievement Award. Her highly acclaimed recordings include her newest single, it's about time. And we're going to share that with you tonight as well. She's made that generously uh, available to the Gym Master Show Live, which we appreciate. She has also won the 2006 Nightlife Award for Major Female Vocalist and has uh, three Bistro Awards as well. Now, uh, Karen was recently seen as um, Madame Geary in the North American premiere of Love Never Dies, which is Andrew Lloyd Webber's epic sequel to Phantom, The Phantom of the Opera. And previously on Broadway, Karen garnered rave reviews starring as the Queen of Hearts in Wonderland. And she originated the role of Tanya in Abba's Mamma Mia. Did you know that? If you went, that was Karen. Yes, yes, absolutely. Brilliant performances for her portrayal of Tanya. Mrs. Mason was awarded uh, a 2002 Drama Desk nomination as Best Actress. And her other leading roles include, yes, Norma Desmond. And that is uh, the photo that's behind me here on set. She was Norma Desmond in Sunset Boulevard, which she performed to critical acclaim and to perfection and standing ovation on Broadway and in Los Angeles for three years. And uh, Velma Von Tussel in the final Broadway company of Hairspray as well. 
unbelievable, really incredible. She was in Jerome Robbins, Broadway, uh, Rosalie in Carnival as well, another Drama Desk nomination, plus featured roles in Broadway's Torch Song Trilogy and Play Me a Country Song. Karen won the Outer Critics Circle Award for her performance in And the World Goes Round and starred off-Broadway in her own show, Karen Mason Sings Broadway, Beatles and Brian. In regional theater, Karen starred in the first national tour of A Christmas Story as Miss Shields. In the world premiere of the stage production of White Christmas, playing the Rosemary Clooney role in St. Louis, uh, Muni Opera. Side by Side by Sondheim, Coconut Grove Playhouse in Florida. Gypsy, Sundance Theater in California. The world premiere of One Tough Cookie, Apple Tree Theater in Chicago. Heartbeats at the Goodspeed Opera House in, uh, that's a fabulous place as well, the Goodspeed Opera House. And also Company, the Huntington Theater in Boston. Most, re uh, most recently in New York, Karen starred in the one woman musical about Dorothy Parker, You Might As Well Live. Now in Cabaret, she has headlined Carnegie Hall, the Kennedy Center, Lincoln Center, Feinstein's at the Regency, Rainbow and Stars, the Algonquin, uh, on and on the Supper Club, the Ballroom in New York City, the Cinegrill, and the UCLA ASCAP Concert Series in Los Angeles, the Plush Room in San Francisco, and Davenport's in Chicago. She has uh, shared Concert stages with Michael Feinstein, Jerry Herman, Cheetah Rivera, Luciano Pavarotti, Rosemary Clooney, Liza Minnelli, John Kander, and Fred Ebb, among others. And Karen has given concerts in the United Kingdom, Sweden, Brazil, Scotland, Tokyo, and on and on. Her starring uh, symphonic performances include the Long Beach Symphony Orchestra with Maestro Michael Berkowitz, the Philly Pops with the legendary Peter Nero, the New York Pops with the one and only Skitch Henderson, the Oklahoma Philharmonic with uh, Joel Levine, the premier performance of the Chicago Land Pops, the Indianapolis Philharmonic, and the St. Louis Symphony with John McDaniel. Her highly acclaimed recordings include her newest single, It's About Time, written by uh, Paul Rolnick who happens to be her fabulous husband, who's a great friend as well, and uh, Shelley Markham, her 2009 Mac Award winning Right Here, Right Now, 2005's The Sweetest of Nights, the Mac Award winning When the Sun Comes Out, as well as three other CDs, Christmas, 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 recorded live at the West Bank Cafe, Better Days, featuring songs by her longtime composer, arranger Brian Lasser, including the 1998 Emmy winning song hold me and uh, not so simply broadway karen has been featured on the soundtrack of the original cast cd of wonderland and on and on and on it's really extraordinary the <laughs> television and film yes her television appearances include the hit dramas um ed and law and order svu film credits includes sleeping dogs don't lie and a chorus line. Cool stuff, huh? Yeah, really cool. She's been very, very busy, very, very busy. And uh, it's my pleasure to welcome her to the show and uh, had an opportunity to be on Law & Order as well. That's really cool. They, sh they filmed that in New York City. It's really cool to be on set. So let's welcome my very special guest, the one and only Karen Mason to the Gym Master Show live. There you are. And that, that, <laughs> I should have sent you the short bio. That was the short list. <laughs> that that was the short one <laughs> so how are you my friend hey i'm doing okay hanging in there you know we're all adjusting to whatever this new thing is and uh it's certainly an interesting time we're living in jim i you know yeah. i i find it i find it i'm very optimistic actually about the world right now i think there's a lot of great things that are going to be happening so you know it's we just have to bide our time i think with the yes. i mean listen theaters theater performing live is going to be it's going to be a long time before we're going to be able to do that but absolutely so what are the, some of the things you've been doing my friend to keep busy to keep creative to keep those juices flowing during all yeah. of this well after the first uh i'd say three weeks of being depressed and just eating everything around the house 
Um, I'm not a baker. Uh, fortunately, I live by people who are bakers, so that really was good. Um, but I, on Thursday, I started doing this uh, little show. I call it a showlet it because it's it's 30 minutes tops, just me singing to tracks from my CDs. And I, you know, set up the lights and the microphone and and uh, you get to see what books I'm reading that week because <laughs> I'm standing yeah. in front of, uh, you know, my bookcase. And it's just so I can continue singing, just so I get a chance to do something. And it's, I know I, I this is a whole new world for me. So, you know, to have 2,000 people view these little things that I do is phenomenal mm -hmm. i'm i'm kind of enjoying it yeah right it's sort of like that the new i wouldn't say the new normal but maybe the new reality of some of the things yeah. that are going on and uh and that's good to keep those creative juices going and to keep connected with with fans and people who've been following along all these years right you yeah. know i mean it's we're all getting a chance to attract new audiences that you know we could never i could never reach somebody in Barcelona, unless I was in Barcelona, you know, or or in in uh, uh, the Netherlands, and um, so that so it's really exciting, and you know, just uh, I worked on um, uh, I wrote a piece about Brian Lasser. Uh, I wrote it a few years ago. It's called Unfinished Business. I wrote it with my friend Barry Kleinbord, and. Um, we're trying to get that, we're working on it. You know, you have to, this is a good time to do those fine tuning things on it. It's a one woman piece and using his music to tell the story of the two of us together. And, um, you know, that's pretty exciting. And I'm mm -hmm. teaching, I'm teaching uh, nice. you know, song performance, so. And how many closets have you cleaned? <laughs> Listen, you know, I, I should. I have not cleaned as many as I should. Those first few weeks, I had my little list of I'm going to clean this and I'm going to do this. And, you know, and unfortunately, Netflix called a lot. It was a lot louder than come clean the closet. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have your, your drink there so we can toast? I we, do. We love to toast our guests. It's, yeah. Clang. Thank you. Clang. Absolutely. Thank you Mm. And congratulations on the show. It's fantastic. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm Again, so you know, happy to be here with you. Oh, it's my pleasure. And, and as you know, I do this work professionally. So when I decided to create this 10 weeks ago, it was a blessing and a joy. And it's just been boom, taking off and doing it nightly. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds like you've got, I mean, I watched a couple of them and I love some of the guests. I Austin Pendleton. Yeah. Yeah. I did, um, they, during the AIDS, uh, epidemic back in the eighties, um, Austin and I did this thing called, um, hearts and voices. Mm. And you would go into, we were all doing benefits to raise money for people with AIDS and all of our friends, but people who were actually in the hospitals weren't getting any of the music. We were doing all of these benefits. Right. So somebody started this organization where you'd go into the hospital and you'd do a little show, you know, like 30, 20, 30 minutes. And so um, it was Christopher Denny, my music director of many years, and Austin Pendleton and I were the guests. And one of my most precious memories is of Austin Pendleton. You know, it's like I go in there and I'm singing, you know, ah, I'm loud and I'm doing up tempos and, you know, just boisterous. And he comes in and sings uh, somewhere. Mm. There's a place for us. Oh, somewhere yeah. a place for us. And this just very, you know, quirky voice and he sings it like I have never heard the song sung before. He acted, I mean, he just told the story of it and the place was quiet. I was weeping. I, it was, I think the most dynamic performance I have ever seen live like that. It, it just moved me so much. Uh, you know, it just proved what I've always said. You don't have to have a great voice to communicate with song. You just That's don't. Right. 
That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful guests. And, uh, you know, I try to make it a warm and inviting and intimate experience. The viewers seem to really like the approach as well. It isn't, you know, cookie cutter. It's just a different sort of, again, modern sensibilities, maybe a little old school polish thrown in. And I think people, they seem to be craving that. And and from the response I've been getting from people, it's it's resonating, which I really, you know, that touches my heart through because I do this kind of work for a living professionally. Yeah. So to do it in this setting too, it's been it's been a joy. Yeah. Well, listen, when you hit on something that, you know, re like you say, resonates with people, it's you, you're doing the right thing. You know, I love the fact that you got the memo, too, about wearing the color. Uh, oh. <laughs> look at that. It's like twins. Yeah. And <laughs> listen, I appreciate you're wearing three layers. I only have two on, <laughs> but you have three. I appreciate that third layer. Very handsome. The air conditioning is on 55 right now. <laughs> <laughs> I had to turn mine off or else you'd hear a <sighs> the entire time, but I have a fan down there blowing. <laughs> That's it. Oh, you have more than one fan. I'll tell you that. Wow. Um, lots of fans. But, um, um, that's it. Uh, George Burns loves that. <laughs> How do you like the George Burns, huh? I love him. I tell you, you can't go wrong with that side, Ken. Does he talk? Yes, Karen, I talk. You look marvelous. You look marvelous. Uh, See, he talks. <laughs> that was real. It was like he, I was there. He talks to the voiceover guy. <laughs> um, so let's go back in time a little bit. When Karen was a young girl running around in her kitchen, was she always the entertainer? Was she always the performer? Do you come from an entertainment family? What was those, what, who were those people? And what were some of those early inspirations for you, Karen, that pointed you in this direction of a brilliant career in the creative arts? Well, thank you. I, you, you know, my mom was a, uh, she was being groomed when she was younger to be a concert pianist, but she didn't like performing in front of people, which was kind of a detriment, kind of, you know, kind of held her back. But we always had music around the, uh, around the house. She would play, she played piano, she played the organ, she always had music on. And my parents were really great about taking us to see musicals, um, to see all kinds of stuff. I am a middle child. So yeah, I think I kind of was always trying to get the attention of anyone around. I didn't realize I was a singer until a little bit older. Um, my sister and I used to do shows for my, my parents um, and they actually sat for it. We called them 4th of July specials. We would have had one very recently if uh, I had been a lot younger, but we used to do these shows and um, you know, I just, I loved, I loved being the center of attention, you know, hey, kind of crazy, I guess me and everybody else in show business. <laughs> but um, when I, I didn't really um, pursue it, think about pursuing it until high school. And I um, went to an all girls Catholic high school in, in Illinois. And so they didn't do the musicals, you know, they, the nuns were just didn't have too much time for musicals. So at the boys school was where they did the musicals. So I went and auditioned and I, you know, I felt like I was home. Yeah. I felt like this was where I needed to be. It felt, I was kind of a, a, Listen, I was a middle child, but I was, you know, kind of a fat kid who felt very out of it and never really, you know, I was never the popular one or, you know, the fun one. I was just kind of a, on the outskirts of things. And so when I started auditioning and did that first show, it was Annie, Get Your Gun. And I had one line. I was a townsperson and I had one line. And um, a monster was created. You know, I just, I thought this, the, I feel more comfortable here than I have felt anywhere. Mm. And um, yeah, I just, I thought, okay, that's where I need to be. I Listen, I had, I had those, Judy Garland, I, you know, I watched every Judy Garland film, listened to every Judy Garland CD, well, album, every cut. 
my mother loved Frank Sinatra. So those were the early, early influences on me. Uh, great, great song stylists, great entertainers. Uh, and that's who I really always envisioned myself being was that type of um, saloon singer, actually, like they all were, you know, concert and saloon singer. What do you consider as the very first opportunity, first big break that came your way through all of that, Karen? Probably, well, uh, you know, it's funny. It was the first break that, that kind of turned my life around was meeting my first music director. I was working out, I was working as a receptionist out in Arlington Heights, Illinois, and really unhappy but very afraid to actually go and pursue show business. And then my sister told me about this um, restaurant in Chicago called Lawrence of Oregano. And they had singing waiters and waitresses. And I went and auditioned and Brian was the music director and we worked together for 16 years. And I, that really, to have someone so, blindly believe in you and want to work with you. And that's how I felt about him. I just wanted every minute to be working with him and creating music. And um, luckily I had him for 16 years. That to me was the first break mm. for me as, a, as an artist. Um, in New York, probably the first real break I got was not my first Broadway show, but was doing um, And the World Goes Round. Mm. The uh, John Kander and Fred Ebb review, uh, being able to meet them and work with legends was fantastic. And that was my first cast album. You know, it was the five of us on stage who got to create that, have that brand new review created around us was very exciting, really exciting. And working with John Kander and Fred Ebb, I mean, come on, that that was just joyous. They were, they are, you know, Fred has passed away, but John is still one of the kindest human beings around and, and always remembers, you know, people he's worked with. That means a great deal, it means a great deal. Absolutely, absolutely. So take us from there, when, when you had that extraordinary opportunity, what happened from then? Because obviously your name, the word on the street was Karen is that uh, the it person. You got to bring her in. She's amazing. She takes the roof off the building. I like your Stop. version of the story much better than the reality. Better than reality, right? <laughs> sign her up. Sign her up. Well, tell us about it. Yeah. Right after that, well, I just, I started doing a lot more, um, uh, I got to do Broadway shows. I, I was uh, the, I got to take over for Debbie Shapiro who won the Tony in Jerome Robbins Broadway. And uh, it was, God, that was so much fun. 62 dancers on stage in that company. That will never happen again, ever. That's it's it. so expensive. 62 dancers and me. So I was the non-dancer in the company and I got to sing the um, uh, the song. It's missed, called Mr. Monotony. It was the my one solo in the show. You know, standing there in a pool of light and singing this fantastic Irving Berlin song. And uh, I I love doing that. As a matter of fact, I'm doing a Pilates class every week with a lot of the people from Jerome Robbins, the really? dancers. I'm keeping up with the dancers now. And um, yeah, I uh, that that was a that was a great opportunity, and I did a lot. You know, it's my career has been kind of all over the place. I I think it's because I have just enough ADD to be fascinated by shining lights. You know, it's like I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. And so I've. You know, Brian and I continued doing uh, cabarets. We opened Don't Tell Mama in 1983. Uh, Nancy Lamott and and uh, Rick Jensen and Brian and myself, we opened uh, Don't Tell Mama in 1983 and really started to develop um, a name for ourselves in cabaret in, in New York. 
and going back to Chicago to work all the time too and do concerts there and open clubs in Chicago. Um, yeah, it's been a, you know, it's been a lot of fun. I, after, after Jerome Robbins, I did, um, oh shoot, what did I do after Jerome Robbins? I think it, there was a long period of time in between that. And I think the next thing might have been um, Sunset Boulevard after that. I was doing a lot of, I did some um, off-Broadway and that's well, my first time out at, at uh, Goodspeed was doing um, Heartbeats, which Amanda McBroom wrote her show. And um Am I talking too much? <laughs> no, no, no. It's fantastic. People love this. I love it too. It's you telling your story. You're not reading about it. It's, it's you telling your story. Amanda's going to be on our show in a couple of weeks too. Oh my God. I love that woman. You'll I have, love her. Be sure and tune in. I will. You know, she to me is, yeah. she, I know you had Michelle on. Michelle yes. Carmen. Oh, yeah. And um, I love those two female writers. Just slay me. I think they are so brilliant, both of them. And um, I, anytime I get a chance to sing any of their music, it's like, it's just a gift. It's just a gift. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so we did that show at it. We did it on their smaller stage and then they moved it to the main stage. And I, I've always kidded um, Amanda about this because she wrote the show for herself, basically but she didn't want to do eight shows a week. And so I was happy to do it. And um, the the show she wrote was a review basically. And everybody, I mean, it had a storyline, but it was, it was kind of a, all of her, it was her catalog of music. Yeah. So it was a, a jukebox musical and she wrote it so that basically she could have maybe one or two songs but then everybody else would sing, which is a very wise thing for a woman to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that everybody else works and you just sit and then you just get to collect, you know, the kudos and the paychecks. And, but I was not quite so magnanimous and said to her, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little left out of here. I, I want to sing your music. I want to be able to sing an Amanda McBroom song. And so she, I don't know whether she wrote this for me. I've always told the story this way, but um, whether she actually always had it, <laughs> but she, uh, she handed me the song dance mm -hmm. and said, this is, you know, the song I'd like you to sing in the show. And, oh my God, you know, there's, if you don't know the song, you really should listen to Amanda McBroom's music. Um, she, the the song dances i would you know you would take me in your arms uh, it was just oh god i think you're just doing that gave everybody a tingle <laughs> I, I know my left toe just curled <laughs> <laughs> i sang it in my last show at birdland be last last you know year before i uh did a show called chasing rainbows mm -hmm. and um it was the first time i had actually sung that song on a cabaret stage and oh yeah it's you would he would you would take me in your arms and hold me tightly we would move across the floor as smooth as glass and everyone would stare whisper what a perfect pair and we knew somehow that time would never pass oh yeah it's just so beautiful yes. she's so amazing Yes, you know, you you gave people uh, a treat there because there's we have like over fifty posts of comments already, oh. and they were saying, "Is she going to sing? Is she going to sing?" So there, <laughs> you got a little bit there, and we have more during our conversation. We're going to show you. I want to show uh, one of the clips right now because it's so fantastic, and um, all all of your music is. But this one is it's about time. Tell us a little bit about that one, Karen, if people aren't as familiar with that. Well, um, this, this song happened because it was right after New York State passed marriage equality. And we had some friends who were going to be getting married. These two gentlemen who I had known for a while, they were going to be getting married and they said, would you be our wedding singer? It was like, um, let me think about that. Yeah. So 
we went out to dinner with them so that they could tell me what they would like me to sing at their wedding, you know, and that, you know, to give me the list of the songs that they'd like me to include. And as we were walking away, I said to my husband, Paul Rolnick, who's a songwriter, I said, honey, you're always talking about, you know, finding inspiration for songs. <laughs> Here you have it right in your lap. These two guys, you know, it's the beginning of a new era, marriage equality, write a song. And he actually, after many years of marriage, finally listened to me and wrote this next song. He, he had the, the hook, which is the, it's about love, it's about life, it's about time. And then he proceeded to write the rest of the song. Uh, he brought in Shelley Markham to co-write with him. And we presented it to Perry and Peter at their wedding. I sang it for them, you know, as a big surprise. And then I asked it permission to uh, release it on the CD. And I know it's been sung at quite a few weddings. And hopefully it will continue to be sung at weddings because I'm so proud, so proud of this song. I think it's, it's... Uh, you know, it's for everybody. It's not just for gay couples. It's not just for straight couples. It's for everybody who uh, feels like they've waited a long time to get married, to be involved, to be in love. Here is the one and only incomparable Karen Mason with It's About Time. Enjoy. And then she and I will be back as we continue this episode of the Gym Masters Show Live. Enjoy. A sacred dream about us. You and I have waited for so long. Walking down the aisle with each other, showing every about a love 
that is meant to last forever. It's about a life that leaves nothing left behind. It's about all the time we have left together. It's about. Mm. You know, wow, that just, wow, wow. All, all those, when we did the video, we asked all of our friends for um, photos from their, their weddings. And oh, just it's so sweet to see so many people and some of them not around anymore. And, you know, boy, life is precious. It really, really is. I mean, I know when you hear that song back, it really touches your heart and soul as well. I was watching you watching the video and how moved, I mean, the comments here, beautiful voice, got the chills, oh, great you. execution of this amazing song. Standing, weddings. <laughs> yeah, right. Heidi standing ovation here, very beautiful voice. Wow, Willie in the Netherlands and Holland still up late at 2 a.m. almost says, wow, what a voice. Uh, Issy loves it in Barcelona. Uh, Rini, very beautiful Karen. Inspiring words from Merlin in Canada. Really good song from Christopher in Ohio. Very inspiring and heartwarming from Mary Ann. This is beautiful too from Karen in New Hampshire. Beautiful. So great to listen to you speak about your career. Performing is certainly your passion. Thank you for singing. Dean realized how much we missed theater. And your singing uh, did help people to remember that as well. Uh, Merlin in uh, Canada, beautiful. Ernestine in North Carolina, beautiful voice, lovely voice, beautiful. I, you know, you've, you've really touched. And that's just, folks, that is, we're just getting started. <laughs> the, the video is also beautiful. I also love, ah, yes, Marianne, who was a guest on our show a couple of weeks ago. Marianne. We love her too, right? Hello, Marianne. Can't oh, boy. Sing her that one. oh, she's amazing. And another wonderful heart and soulful individual, right? Really a beautiful person really? as well. Yeah. Great to see you here, Marianne. And um, let's see, uh, you became a wedding singer. I became a wedding photographer. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's teamwork. Uh, uh, really, really, absolutely beautiful. Really, really. Thank uh, you. I will pass that on to, uh, to uh, Paul. I, I know. Yeah. Uh, the instrumentation was fantastic as well. Yeah. The, the rhythms and the choice of instruments. Real, that's all Paul's uh, work. Um, I think the orchestration might have been, I, I uh, don't quote me on this because I'm always wrong, but yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of people, the, Tom Cochin has orchestrated a lot for our CDs, but really nice. that might have been just Paul. He's he's pretty, pretty talented. Yeah. I just love, yeah, and your voice is like just like bata, Thank really, you. really beautiful. Thanks. And uh, Maria, says, great to see both of us. Loves us, loves Karen. <laughs> Go back, the, Marianne. That's right. Go back in the archives, folks. We had a wonderful interview with uh, Maria as well, and she performed. And, yeah, we have really, really great people on the show. And uh, I have something else. I've got another treat here that we're going to share with our illustrious audience from around the world. Uh, this is um, Up on the Roof. Oh, yeah, I love that song. It's a good one. Yeah, go. it is. You know, I grew up here. I remember when Tapestry came out and um, my friend Susie 
and I, she played piano, and Susie and I would sit at the piano and play. She got the songbook of Tapestry, and we just sang through everything. And uh, that song in particular I've always loved. So we're going to share that. And there's somebody very special behind me there. <laughs> Whoa. Big yeah. hand gestures there. We will, we will reveal who that is right after this. <laughs> what a teaser that is, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's more of the lovely and talented, the incredible Karen Mason. When this old world starts getting me down and people are just too Yes, I, I agree. And social distance, people. What are you, crazy? Come on. Come on. You know? Pandemic messages, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Absolutely. And again, 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 beautiful voice. And Willie, that tried and true Willie in Holland, she says, I don't know if you caught this, she goes, uh, and I love this, um, what a lovely lady. I am glad I am awake. Well, thanks, Willie. Me too. I'm glad you're awake too. I love Holland. I sang it. Actually, I sang at a wedding of my friend Matt in Holland. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Oh, I love. It was in Amsterdam. I love oh, yeah. Amsterdam. That's that's her. That's her hometown. I was on two. I was on a TV shoot in uh, throughout the Netherlands uh, last year and the year before, and it was really. Absolutely amazing, beautiful voice from Jacqueline. I love her version of this song from Merlin in uh, Ontario, Canada. And she has a great voice. You even got thumbs up from my mother in Florida. <laughs> yeah, she loves it. That's my mom in Florida. Yeah. 
Stay Helen, safe, mom in Florida. That's it. Helen loves your voice. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, lots more. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, actually. I hope she does better days. That is coming up. Yes. And now so much for today. <laughs> yes. I weep when I hear it. So it really touches her. She's watching. Marianne is watching on Jim Masters TV on YouTube. Uh, and Double hearts from Renee in Iowa. Uh, just lovely. Very heartfelt. Absolutely. Even the expression in your eyes when you were singing it. Uh, you were really, really taking that song on uh, deeply. Maxine, Lamar, good to have you with us. Maxine, welcome to the Gym Master Show Live. Double hearts and double claps. Wow. wow. Thank I, you. You are scoring big tonight, Ms. Mason. <laughs> that is fantastic. We have only the best audience here on the Gym Master Show. Only yeah, the best. Seriously. I'm originally from the UK. I have been to Holland. Beautiful. Loves everything as well. Isigari. Uh, loves this as well. Thanking oh, you. Gracias, Cici. Gracias. Barcelona, Spain. That's right. And Pamela says you have an amazing voice. And um, hello, mom of Jim. You have a nice son from Willie and Holland. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Double tulips for you. Double tulips for you. Hey, you never, there's never too many compliments for a mother. So it's good. It's That's good. Right. Karen knows what she's saying when she is singing composers. She's a composer's best friend. Absolutely. Oh. Total body singing with every cell engaged in the emotion. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I like singing like that. Singing That's with it. my toes. That's it. Absolutely. <laughs> and here's another, here is Better Days. We're going to share that with our audience as well. And thanks for all these wonderful comments, everybody. It's the top of the hour. I'm going to do my little uh, broadcaster training here. It's the top of the hour. Jim Masters here, your host, very special guest, the incomparable Broadway and Cabaret star, uh, Karen Mason, joining us live here on our broadcast. We're beaming worldwide on Jim Masters TV, on YouTube, and on Facebook. And we are here every single night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, with light, levity, and love, or lovity. That's what it's all about, right? <laughs> and wonderful guests and great comments. And it's just tell everybody about the show. We have great guests. And even when we don't have guests, we have a lot of good times together on location and more. Here is Better Days, and we'll come back with more, and we will still tell you who that is behind me there. <laughs> In just a moment. Inquiring minds want to know. I have to turn this on, and it'll take me a second. All right, here we go. Technology is us. Just me. 
might find there's something more for if there's sun again to drive the rain away someone will come again to take the pain away so when the midnight cries my eager heart replies, there will be better days. There will be wind. There will be rain. And there Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely you get beautiful. That message in there, be safe, wear a mask. <laughs> that yeah. was written by Ryan Lasser, and he was the gentleman I met who kind of changed my life. Um, and um, on guitar is Sean Harkness, who is an amazing guitarist, obviously so beautiful. And all I could think watching that was, ooh, look at that pandemic hair, my friends. <laughs> I'm, I'm now silver but it's pandemic passion that's pandemic what it is passion, yes <laughs> yeah it's not ppp it's just pp <laughs> pandemic passion a lot of yeah. wonderful comments here and yes that's inspired so many to say yes there will be better days ahead for yes. all of us i mean the timing of that couldn't be more apropos or more brilliantly timed as well and yet it was written 40 years ago isn't that amazing yeah, yeah I'd say uh, quality in all forms of life really stands the test of time when it is quality. Uh, I'm a true believer. Yeah. That's what makes the Great American Songbook a Great American Songbook is that those songs, they're human. You know, humanity hasn't changed that much, unfortunately. Fortunately and unfortunately, but, you know, it's. Uh, right. Right. It all, if it speaks to the heart and it's about something real. Absolutely beautiful. Your voice touches my heart. Oh, and Pamela. I mean, a lot of claps really? from Willie wow. and Holland. Yeah, she's hanging in there at almost uh, <laughs> 2 a.m. It's past 2 a.m. Uh, hearts and rainbows from Mary Ann. Mary Ann's probably crying. Yeah, beautiful from Maxine Lamar oh. as well. And we have more to share with you. And uh, yes, the oldies never die. That's right. Uh, wonderful yeah. music and quality. Uh, we have something else we want to share here, which involves the Kennedy Center. I'm going to set that up. I, I will uh -huh. have our crew set that up. Uh, what is this about? I, I saw it, but I want you to hear it. I want you to describe it for our audience from your words, Karen. Yeah, I was very, very blessed in that I got to sing at the Kennedy Center. and But this wasn't this was in the hallway of the Kennedy Center. ASCAP had an amazing series that uh, it was, they would have cabaret shows out in basically the, the, foyer, the foyer of, you know, of where all these beautiful theaters are. And they did a three camera shoot and I had always wanted to sing this song. I always loved it, but you know, sometimes you stay away from songs that you grew up singing and hearing. I mean, I heard Judy Garland sing it my entire life and wept every time I would say, I would, you hear it and sing it. And Christopher Denny, who's at the piano and my music director, he did an arrangement of it and just simple. And this was our closing number. This was our encore actually uh, at the Kennedy Center. And um, mm. I hope you enjoy it. It makes, you know, I'm very, very proud that we were able to do that at the Kennedy Center. Mm. That must have really been extraordinary when you got that opportunity to do that. I mean, when you when that call came in, what what, what was did your heart skip a beat? Um, you know, yeah, I, I it it really was an amazing thing. It was Michael Kirker who is uh, ran the musical theater 
program at ASCAP. I think he still does the, uh, you know, takes care of all of the musical theater writers at ASCAP. And he was the, the person who put this whole thing together. And he's been very good to me throughout my career. So to have him call and say, would you like to play the Kennedy Center? It was another one of those, oh, let me think about that moment. You know, no, of course I'm gonna be there. You know, I don't even have to think about it. I don't care how much you're gonna pay me. Well, my husband will care how much you're gonna pay me. <laughs> <laughs> But it was, you know, and it's everything that it's as glorious as you you think it should be. Mm, let's share. Yeah, that sounds absolutely incredible. Let's share it with our worldwide audience here on the Gym Master yeah. Show live right now. And let's enjoy Karen Mason at the Kennedy Center. When all the world is a hope. Let's see if we can bring that up. Oops. It's doing its own thing here. Let's reboot it. I do sing things more. I do sing up tempos too, by the way, just for everybody's knowledge, not just ballads, but I love ballads. Have you been rebooted lately, Karen? <laughs> you're being, you're being, you're being, you're being, you're being, I've had nothing but technical <laughs> difficulties the past three days with my phone and my computer. There you go. It's, uh, the whole world is rebooting now. Please reboot. <laughs> All right. We're freshening. We like to use the word freshen. So uh, here we here we go. Here is Karen doing her thing at the Kennedy Center over the rainbow. Worth the wait, that's for sure. Oh, thank you. When all the world is a hopeless jumble And the raindrops tumble all around Heaven opens a magic lane When all the clouds darken up the skyway there's a rainbow a highway to be found Leading from your window pane To a place behind the sun Just a step beyond the rain Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. are blue and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind Where troubles melt like lemon drops Away above the chimney tops That's where you'll find me Somewhere over the rainbow Bluebirds fly Bluebirds fly 
And who wouldn't buy those CDs? Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Them. They're available. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh boy. So again, that's that's quite an honor, huh? That was really oh, uh, that's great. I, I, I actually, Michael Berkowitz asked me to do a uh, uh, symphonic concert of Judy Garland um, at Carnegie Hall, and I have to say mm -hmm. that was thrilling because to be able to sing those uh, orchestrations, those arrangements that I grew up with, yeah, uh, you know, come rain or come shine with the bongos. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, mind blowing. I had, it was, it's uh, nothing better. You know, I've been very lucky in my life. Very, mm. very, very lucky to do some really fantastic, wonderful things. There have been, you know, a lot of crappy moments too, but there have been a lot of really great moments. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to elaborate now? Oh, no, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll have you back for part two on that one, right? <laughs> that'll be about 10 hours, but that's the, that's the after hours broadcast. <laughs> yeah. We you do know, have I love that you I love that people are staying up late for this. When I was when we started doing cabaret back in the 70s and 80s, we did 11, 1, and 3 a.m. shows on Friday and Saturday. People actually stayed awake for 3 a.m. shows. Well, if the quality's there and the talent's there and they're feeling it, they will do that, right? Which yeah. I think is absolutely amazing. More comments coming in, more claps and standing ovations from Thank Kathleen, you. Thank Heidi, you. Uh, Pamela. Amazing. I love this song so much. Beautifully sung over the Thanks. rainbow. Lovely. Wow, you got rainbows and sun and claps <laughs> and microphones and hearts there. All kinds of beautiful things. Oh, the rainbow, lovely. It is really one of the most beautiful songs. I mean, it really is. And cutting to the chase, Pamela says, I think we all have crappy moments. <laughs> I've had my share. And uh, enjoy the good times, I guess. And right, I think somewhere she said the, she was rebooting as well. <laughs> so we also have some really cool um, photos that we want to share. First of all, we might as well reveal Who's behind me? <laughs> My past. Mm. Those Norma people Desmond. in the dark. Norma Desmond, huh? What yeah. was that like performing in that? Well, in that. I'll tell you, it was amazing because I was the standby for the role of Norma Desmond. So I, I covered Glenn Close, Betty Buckley, and Elaine Page. And when they weren't there... That's when I got to go on. And I had never stood by for anybody before. Didn't understand that in Broadway shows, in tours, covers do not get a lot of rehearsal. And so uh, the first time I went on, because they were all saying to me, well, you know, Glenn hasn't been doing, a sh she hasn't done a musical in a long time. It's very strenuous. She'll probably be taking, you know, missing performances. Of course, she did not, which was great, but also bad because I'm a performing animal. I want to be out there, you know. So I was prepared by the time I went on, which was maybe four or five months later from after opening. And it was like being shot out of cannon because I had never had the rehearsal period to be on the stage totally. I, you know, I would grab my time but i never did things like shot the gun you know i never wore all the costumes throughout the show 
it was, I think, perhaps one of the finest learning experiences I ever have ha have had. The, the stage manager told me I took 15 minutes off the show the first time I did it. I think, I don't think I breathed from the beginning to the very end. And uh, I, I, I learned to love doing that show. It is really a day at the beach for an actress and a singer. And everything about that show, the largeness of it, the intensity, everything is big, you know, and the songs are big and the orchestra was huge. The costumes are immense. Uh, you know, there's, you can't be, you can't be small and no. play a Desmond. And it was, and yet it has to be real. You know, it has to be based in a, a character. It has to be based in a human. You have to believe that this is a person. And um, I loved every minute of it. Every minute of it. Mm was glorious and to yeah. sing those songs yeah, yeah was great absolutely great. wonderful photos here uh tell us about this oh ha i would die that was fun i was singing with the i was very very thin then uh, <laughs> singing with the united states air force band i was doing mama mia at the time so you know, wearing spandex, white spandex was definitely the uh, reason to keep thin. And uh, I went out on my uh, vacation actually and did a concert with the United States Air Force Band and they were fabulous, all brass. I mean, there was, it's all horns and trumpets, perfect for me. And um, yeah, I love doing that. They, there was a, that was outdoors and great fun. Mm. Great. Yeah. And of course, here we go here. Ah, yes, there she is, Norma. Mm. Is mm. That's that's quite a role to take on. This is a great shot, too. Oh, I love, I love this. Bill Westmoreland. Um, you know, he he's uh, been a photographer I've been going to for a while now. And this this was the last photo we did after two hours. It's always that. It always yes. turns out yeah. that last little photo that turns out to be the one that you love. And he's the he had the idea of keeping the um, instruments, you know, in the in the photo. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, it's really really cool. Very beautiful shot. And how about this one here? <laughs> <laughs> I love her. I love this Queen of Hearts. Um, uh, Susan Hilferty did the costumes. Uh, Wonderland was a Frank Wildhorn uh, musical, and uh, he wrote the song Off With Their Heads for me. Actually, he rewrote it. He had written it for an, an, another woman who had played the character, but then I, I got the role, and uh, it was really fun. I just loved it, everything about it. When I saw that costume, I actually cried because mm. it, so, it was such a piece of art. It was like wearing a museum piece. A museum piece that weighed 25 pounds, may I say. But I was, I was going to say, what was it like? What was the ordeal like getting ready just in costume? Yeah, this is about four different pieces. And because that skirt is two separate things. There's like a fan in the back, like a tail. And then this, you know, the cards, the splaying cards on the side. It's It was so brilliant, but so freaking heavy. And... <laughs> Um, it was just, uh, God, I love that role so mm. much. I'm so sad when that show closed. Uh, it made me, it just made me very sad because <laughs> mm. I've been doing it. We had worked on it in Tampa. They had done, you know, pre-Broadway in Tampa and uh, Houston for two years before, you know, off and on, like six weeks here, six weeks there. And I had a great... Um, I just loved her. I loved this character. I had really built her, you know, really made her what she was. And then we got to Broadway and they kind of changed everything. They do that a lot. Mm. They yeah. will, you know, try to, I don't know, make it better, make it something. Perfected or, yeah. Yeah, you know, they tried to give it a lateral, like a lateral story. And it's Alice in Wonderland. There's nothing... 
chaos is what the show is about. And, to be, yeah. and in doing that, they just kind of, I think they didn't find their way and the show closed after a month. It was very, very sad, very disheartening. Well, remember what they used to say sometimes, you go with your gut feeling and when you would change an answer on a test in school, oftentimes the first answer was the right answer. Right, right. exactly. Your first instinct. You know, my husband says that in the studio. He'll always say, you know, when you're not thinking about it, that's when you do your best take. That's the right. You start thinking about stuff. Forget it. Forget yeah. it. It's, it becomes a whole, then it becomes a project. You're not, you're not loving right. it as much. You're worried about every little nuance and it becomes too. Let's go back in time here. What a cool shot this is, Karen. Oh, ha, ha, oh. that, yeah, that was uh, another Michael Kirker. Um, boy, I've had many hair colors um, <laughs> and many hairdos. This was a, a Democratic fundraiser, and it was at uh, uh, Mr. Kennedy's house. Um, that's Brian on uh, the other side. And uh, we were asked to perform at this through Michael Kirker of ASCAP. And uh, that, you know, you, if you've not been around somebody who has that kind of an aura, it truly was amazing to be around that. He had... I'd, I'd never totally experienced that kind of Kennedy aura. It it did exist. He walked into the room and it was, the, the waters just kind of parted a little bit. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Was, I was happy we took that picture. I'm not always good at taking pictures. I <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because you're in the moment, so you're not always the one taking the pictures. You have to have the other person around right. to do it for you. Absolutely, yeah. Well, and then good at that though, I bet you're good at getting pictures yeah. with people. I got that with my father too. Uh, he has always been the the picture taker from eight millimeter film all the way up, <laughs> always capturing. And I think that might have led to why I'm a broadcaster and a host because always capturing moments and sharing moments and creating moments as well. What you did know. your dad do? Uh, actually, he worked for 35 years in sales for many years. And my mother, and has since retired, my mother worked for 33 years for SD Lauder. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, you were destined for some sort of sales to me. That's just, you know, it's basically the same thing. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. He, uh, my father from New York City, my mother originally from uh, Connecticut, my oh. father... Yeah, my father, English, Irish. My mother, English, Swedish, and French. My mother, the uh, youngest of 16. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Do a, whole, do, must have been something. do a whole show on that, right? Yeah. You need a lot of mashed potatoes for that one. <laughs> Had to send this. That's the photo. And wow, very impressive career. Absolutely. Uh, Issy in uh, Barcelona. Mm hmm. Musicalist, she's loving this. Um, they love the costume. Yeah, it really was fabulous. Mm -hmm. Property was the costume designer for Wicked. So, oh, yeah. yeah I mean, woman lovely, is lovely pictures of a lovely lady. Oh, Marie, thank you. Marianne says, What a great interview! Thank you, Marianne. We appreciate that. It's uh, good to love what you are doing as well. Wow, so many comments coming in here. Um, I'm good at selling myself, probably. <laughs> what yeah, actually, so, you have to be. You know, I'm actually better at selling other things than myself. And a lot of talent are that way, right? Yeah. We're good at selling everything else, but right. when it comes to ourselves. Uh, I always yeah. said that, you know, um, in 84, I, I had a paralyzed vocal cord, which was just a, a virus thing. And it came back you know, I was lucky, but I said during that time, you know what? I should have, I really should have been a manager for all my friends. Cause I would have sold them great. Yeah. Selling that's... myself. I don't do it so well, but selling other people, you're right. Yeah. It's really amazing. I want to set something else up here. There's another one here that I want to share with everybody. So I, this is a really cool one too. So I want to see if we can Share that screen. We're pulling that off from another another source here. So we're gonna share that right now. Here it comes up. And 
it's amazing. I'm, uh, I tell you, I'm uh, quite adept to a lot of these different things. I tell you, it's amazing here. Uh, you do what you got to do, right? So here is, this is, but the world goes round. So we're pulling that up. There you are. You're, you're, you're poised and ready at attention to go. <laughs> That's right. This was early in the morning, I got to say. That's it. So uh, she's poised. She's ready. She's <laughs> polished. I will give her the intro. Broadway and cabaret star extraordinaire, Karen Mason, is going to sing for us right now. But the world goes round. And here we go in three, two, one, and enjoy. Sometimes you're happy and sometimes you're sad, but the world goes round. Sometimes you lose every nickel you had, but the world goes round. Sometimes your dreams get broken in pieces. But that doesn't alter a thing. Take it from me, there's still gonna be a summer, a winter, a fall, and a spring. And sometimes your friends start treating you bad, but the world goes around. And sometimes your heart breaks with a deafening sound. Somebody loses, somebody wins. One day it kicks, then it kicks in the shins. But the planet spins and the world goes around. And round the world goes round. The world goes round. Sometimes your dreams get broken in pieces. But that doesn't matter at all. Take it from me. There's still gonna be a summer, a winter, a spring, and a fall. And sometimes your friends start treating you bad. But the world goes around And sometimes your heart breaks With a deafening sound Somebody loses, somebody wins One day it kicks, then it kicks in the shins but the planet spins and the world goes around and round and around and around and around. The world goes around and round and round and round. <laughs> Not just round, but round duh. Uh, round duh. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 that round duh usually costs extra, but you got it here. <laughs> that was the period on that sentence. <laughs> it was round duh, damn it. <laughs> That's it. 
That stamp of approval. Fantastic. Fantastic. I love that. I, I just love, you know, you put so much vim and vigor in everything and you love it. You can, you can just tell Karen, not only that you've been doing this for, you know, a number of years and it's something that you've honed and it's, it's a fine tuned, well oiled craft, but it's also something that just I know that I'm sure, and I know I've asked this of a lot of people, and I know I feel oftentimes that I get inspiration from a variety of different sources as a an observer of life, especially being an on-camera person uh, and talent. Um, you sometimes, I bet, you feel like you're being inspired to do what you do so beautifully and brilliantly by things that are greater than even yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, listen, I never felt like I had a choice about this. I always felt like this was what I did. And um, I've been lucky to meet the right people to work with. I don't have any other skills. This is it. And I'm just lucky that it brings me as much joy as it does. You know, I do love what I do. I really love it. I don't love the business part of it, but I do love the singing part of it. I love singing with, you know, a great person at the piano. I love singing a great, great song that I can connect with. You know, I, it does feel like it's, you know, I, I was given an opportunity, a gift, a talent, and I, I feel that I have to take care of it and, and do, you know, I have to honor it and it is beyond me. It is outside. It's not me. I didn't do anything. I just show up and take care of it. God given talent that you have been gifted um, and recognized early and embraced and then share with the world, which is a beautiful blessing for you and those around you, as well as for the rest of the uh, consumers of your beautiful talent around the world, right? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm lucky, you know? Yes, any of us that are doing the work that we love that is an expression and an extension of ourselves, right. like you do, Karen, like I do as well, communicating. We're, we're born communicators. We have a need and a desire to touch people's lives, to inspire, to lift them up, to put a smile on their face, to make them laugh, to get them to forget about their problems, to realize we're all in this together. To, yeah. uh, it's very important for us to do this work. And it brings you great joy to do it, doesn't it? Oh, totally. And, uh, you know, it is about that. I, I've always felt like the, the whole thing about communication, it's telling a story so that you, people who hear it don't feel so alone, that they know that they're not alone. You know, when I see a great singer, somehow it makes me feel like, oh, well, they really recognize what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> How do they know? And, um, you know, that to me is, is when it's really working, when people feel like you're sharing a story and they feel like it's about them. Too. That's, that's the king. That's the king. Uh, relatability is huge. I think that's why even with television shows like I Love Lucy and all these others still resonate with people because they see essences of themselves. Oh, they could watch a movie and you see little nuances that remind you of yourself or, or of loved ones. And when you make that connection with an audience, with an individual, um, there's nothing sometimes more beautiful maybe, right? Yeah, it is a gift. And it took me a long time to actually say that I had talent. You know, I was, I grew up in a Catholic Midwestern home where, you know, humility was very important. Yeah. And I think it still is. I, I listen, I think humility is, sometimes forgotten, but uh, I think it's also important to acknowledge what your talent is so that you know to take care of it. That's and, right. Uh, yeah. What are some of the things you do? Like this might be interesting uh, for me as well as the audience. There's certain vocal practices that I do and certain you know, habits and things that I do to keep my voice in training, uh, you know, so that I can do on air for the longevity uh, that I've had. 
Um, how about you? What are some, what's like a daily routine for Karen to keep fine tuned and honed? If I'm working, very different. Um, you know, the, the having to be home and not be able to work has kind of changed a lot of things. I've, I'm finding I really have to make a concerted effort yeah. to vocalize, you know, do like my 20 minutes of vocalises to, and keep my breathing and everything in sync. Um, when I'm doing a show, I'm, I'm very, uh, you know, I'm sure you're the same way, you know, you focused. I vary. I have a very specific thing that I do during the day, you know, taking a nap at three 30 so I can get up at four 30, start preparing for the show that night. Um, you know, I get up, have my breakfast, go to work out, have lunch, take a nap, do the show. And depending upon the, you know, how difficult the show is, how strenuous it is, um, you know, kind of dictates how I don't go out after a show. I don't, I really take good care of myself, really make sure I, I have my instrument, you know. And Paul is there to make sure that you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> of each other, of each other. Yeah, no, no, we've been together since 1991, so. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we, you know, we do take care of each other. It's a good thing. It's a, I'm, I'm lucky to have him too. Speaking of uh, good things, Pamela says, this is so uplifting to watch tonight. Uh, before retiring, I was a floral designer and I loved it and still help out at several florists during busy times. I'm an on-call floral designer. That is beautiful. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Doing what you love. And uh, saying good night as well, Merlin. Oh, phone and is dying. Mine is dying <laughs> out. Good night, Merle. Merle. <laughs> in Ontario, Canada. And uh, we're lucky watching you tonight, so uplifting. And we're lucky that you're watching in New Hampshire, Karen, as well. We appreciate that. Pamela, you have uh, a God given talent, Karen, just like okay. what we were saying yeah. before. And, um, Marianne, uh, on YouTube, your skill is that you are such a great Aww. person. Some really beautiful things. When you get feedback like that, and you know, I know we don't take any of the feedback we get for the work that we do lightly. It, it, it's, it's sort of a driving force in a way as well. Um, how does that make you feel? I know you've heard so many things over the years and accolades galore, but I know it still touches your heart when somebody just bumps into you and says, you know, I've been watching you or listening to you. And I get that too. And it's very, very moving. Usually it's when I'm, you know, at home, at home Depot and I have a five o'clock shower and sweatpants on and the baseball cap on, I'm getting lumber. And then they come up to you. Not when I'm in the tuxedo, <laughs> but, but when you do get it, I, you know, I've been following you for years. I've always never came up to you, come up to you to say anything, but then that time you inspired them, you related to them and they got the gumption to come up to Karen and say, I just love your work and you've touched me in so many different ways. I can't even describe. How does it make you feel? Well, it just makes you, you know, I, old, first of all. <laughs> and, um, and it, but it also makes you feel like, uh, okay, maybe I made the right choice. You know, there are a lot of choices you can make in your life about work and, um, how you choose to live your life, the person you choose to be. And, and when somebody comes up and says nice things to you, you feel like, Okay, maybe I made some good choices along the way, and that, and that's gratifying, you know. It really, really is. Um, anything that uh, you have not done that you still would love to do? Are there things? Are there duets? Are there projects? Things that you've always had on that list of gee, you know, I would like to take a crack at that at some point. Um, actually, there are quite a few. Um, uh, I would love to do a show called Dear World, which is a Jerry Herman show. I, you know, I've always wanted to do MAME, but now I'm getting a little OLD for that. <laughs> um, you know, unless it's a very large venue. But that, I mean, I love his scores. I'd love to do a Sondheim show. I've never done a Sondheim show. Mm. Uh, side by side by Sondheim at the Coconut Grove, but not really a Sondheim mm. show. Um, you know, I'd love to work. I just saw Hamilton and, um, 
I, it blew me away. I mean, I'd love to work with Thomas Kale and I'd like Lynn Manuel Miranda to write me a show. <laughs> Are you listening, Lynn? <laughs> <laughs> She's here. She's ready. Yeah. You know, I mean, there, listen, I, I, I there's so many more things I want to do. I'm not done yet. You know? Uh, so uh, I just keep, waiting for the next door to open. I know it's going to be a while now because of, you know, where we are with live performing, but yeah. eh, I don't know. Some door will open and it'll be fun. And, you know, I'll go and be fascinated with that then. And I get to meet people like you. Of course, over dinner with Paul and like, 40 other people at a long table celebrating our other mutual dear friend, David Friedman at yeah. uh, the Friars Club when we was being honored. What a great night uh, that, that was. was as well. Night. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you mentioned Nancy Lamont as well, uh, who of course he was very close to as well and has worked on a lot of her music. And uh, she was a, another beloved uh, star of the cabaret world as well. Huh? Yeah. Boy, she really was. I mean, she, it, it's too, there's been so many people who have died too young and, and she was certainly one of them. She was on a, a great rise. You know, that was a, a fantastic voice. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So life is weird, you know, the, absolutely. Unfortunately, the, what is it? The good die young. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Cameron, we were talking about the times that we're living in now and music is really a healing force in so many different ways. And I've been telling people that, you know, I think we were social distancing before we actually started to have to social distance because we had our heads stuck in our cell phones. And oh. nobody, nobody was listening and everybody was just stuck on social media and everybody was sort of, where are the kind people, the empathetic people, the friendly people? Where is everybody? Where are the nice people? And now we're stuck in the homes and now we have to social distance and now we have all these different things that have been happening. And I think this can be as, as horrific as all of this has been and continues to be in so many different ways. Um, there is still an opportunity here that we could all grasp, you know, humanity collectively can grasp, which could be a very beautiful, long lasting and meaningful reset of sorts where maybe we rise up out of these ashes uh, more loving and empathetic and kinder and we listen to each other and less divisive and supportive and uh, appreciative of nature and environment and just each other in ways that maybe we sort of yeah. forgot about and we, we got off the track a little bit, right? Yeah, I think, you know, this is a great opportunity. That's why I feel optimistic, even with all the um, difficulty in the world and, and the divisiveness. Um, I do feel optimistic that this is an opportunity for people to actually hear what their fellow human beings are saying and, and really listen and hear with their hearts and their minds and be kinder. You know, David Friedman wrote a song about, you know, I, I, I oh, we can be kind. Thank you. We can be kind. Yeah. And, and, um, you know, I, yeah, I think that's, I always thought it was um, probably the, uh, I don't know. I always, I always felt like when people would say you're so nice, that it was a horrible thing that they were saying to me. And, you know, now I think it's, I think we need more nice. <laughs> yeah. I think nice is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's something that you are, kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. And uh, it was an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. And uh, I know you were coordinating uh, the show with dinner. Did, <laughs> did, you, did you already have the dinner or is the dinner sitting in the microwave oven waiting for start to be pressed? <laughs> <laughs> my husband's actually... He he quietly walked past and went into the kitchen and I've been smelling everything he's been making. What, what's on the, what's, what's on the uh, table uh, for tonight? It's a mean chili, my husband. So oh, wow. Uh, he's, he made some chili and we're going to be having that. And good stuff. he's been cooking a lot. Not me. Yeah. A lot uh, of people. Yeah. A lot of people have, cook, but he's a, he's a great cook and fearless and, 
So um, he's been in there. <laughs> we'll be eating in a few minutes. Great show tonight, Jim and Karen. You have a beautiful voice. Uh, some really beautiful comments. Of course, you did Gypsy as well. You did yeah. Company. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Mm -hmm. Mentioning all that as well. Uh, you are a beautiful lady and have a heartwarming smile. Thank you all so much. This has been so much fun. So much fun. Isn't it? Uh, yeah, I, I, you have a great show. It really is great. I appreciate it. And I hope you've enjoyed your time with me as much as I have with you, Karen. You're amazing. And your audience is lovely, really beautiful. And international. I love that. And there's and George. <laughs> I love you, Karen. Good yeah. job tonight. <laughs> Good night, George. Good night, Silver. Good night, Good night. Jim. And Jeannie. And Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was really amazing. You're a hoot and you're an amazing talent. And even more than that, you're a beautiful soul. And uh, I had a wonderful time. It was a pleasure having you here for this extended conversation. And I really appreciate it. And the door is always open. I'm just looking at all these comments that are coming in here. Thank, Thank you very you. much. You have a beautiful soul. Wow. Um, really beautiful stuff here. So thanks so much for joining me, my friend, here on the show. I really appreciate it. Again, more. I know they want you to see there. Thank oh. you, Kat, for sharing your story and talents tonight. So really, really beautiful Thank stuff you. here from all around the world. Um, Again, I had a wonderful time and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, Karen. Oh, yeah, no, it's great. It was really fun. Thank you. It's so easy. That's it. You take care. It was a pleasure. Blessings and joy. Have a yeah, yeah. and enjoy that chili. It sounds good. <laughs> it is good. Someday we'll have you over. Oh, we'll I love it. Chili. <laughs> I'll bring the wine, the bread, and yeah, again, friends. and I toast to you. You're back at you. Thank Friendship. you so much. Thank Continued success. Be well. Thank you, Karen. And thank Paul as well for, you know, coordinating some of this and uh, having dinner waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> I will. We'll see you guys again soon. All right. Take thank care. Bye-bye now. Our very special guest, Karen Mason. Is she not amazing? I told you. She is absolutely breathtaking. She, Her voice, you got a sample. If you've never heard her before, well, now you know who she is. Again, she is a legend in Broadway and cabaret history, and um, she loves to share with her audience in ways that touch deep. And what I love about that is that's what I try to do as well, uh, you know, in my roles in television, radio, and, and stage work. And when you get a chance to celebrate people like that, it's beautiful. And thanks for all the great comments, everybody. It's uh, a wonderful opportunity. Uh, for sharing the evening with you and my wonderful friend, Karen Mason, Broadway and cabaret star, sharing so much music and, and wonderful stories and levity, light and love with us here on the program on the Jim Masters Show Live. Thank you, Jim, for a beautiful evening with you. We thank you as well. And everybody, even the guests, everybody loves George Burns. So George says, have a good night, everybody. And of course, Jeannie as well. We'll show all the characters there. So Jeannie's in there. Jeannie's, Jeannie's asleep now. Jeannie's asleep. So she's sleeping. She's getting her beauty sleep. And your friend Silver says a good night as well. Silver enjoyed himself. Silver from Switzerland. And of course, you have to have Jimmy. Jimmy is here. I think Karen fell in love with all the cast of characters as well, right? Every host has their cast of characters and sidekicks. And Jimmy says... He loves you all as well. Um, and as you know, on this show, I always say, yes, I agree. Here we go. More comments. She is fabulous. Yes. And be blessed, Jim. Good night. You as well. It was a pleasure having her here on the show. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we have incredible guests tomorrow night. Stephen Mosher is going to be with us from broadwayworld.com. Uh, he is the cabaret editor. He's also a photographer and a physical trainer as well. And uh, Rini Katz is here on Thursday. Uh, Anne Hampton Calloway is here on Friday. Yes. And on, uh, that's going to be amazing. And on Saturday, Chloe Agnew from Celtic Woman is going to be with us. And she has a solo career as well. Great week of guests and light, levity, and love, and so much more here on the Gym Master Show Live. As you know, as I always say, I might be the host of the show and producer and the star of the show. However, you are the stars as well. That's right. You and you and you, 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 and you. 
you guys from all around the world, ladies and gentlemen, you guys are the stars of the Gym Masters show live just as much as Gym Masters is. Relax, breathe, take care of one another, love one another. Thank you very much for your time, spending your time with us and my very special guest, Karen Mason, a legendary star of Broadway and cabaret fame. Beautiful voice, wonderful talent, wonderful heart. And again, uh, love having guests uh, that uh, share their stories intimately and share so much levity with us here. And that's what we get out of the show. It's uh, something I've done for years. I think I've interviewed over 6,000 people on television and radio. Um, but I love when I get a chance to do it here for you, nightly at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Relax, breathe, take care of one another. I know times are a little strange right now, but... Um, Hang in there, folks. We're all in this together. I know that's a phrase that everybody says, but it's really true. I mean, what are the other options? We're all in this together. We all need each other. So if you can, breathe and relax. Breathe from the diaphragm. That's really, really good. Have some ice cream. Make a bowl of chili like Paul did for Karen as well. Why not, right? Do what you can and um, just keep smiling. We're going to be here for you tomorrow night. Uh, and I hope you're going to be here as well. If not, you can watch all the shows in the archives at Jim Masters TV. That's right, on YouTube at Jim Masters TV. All of the shows, all the great guests, and all of the on-location segments. We went to the Netherlands. We went to Malibu, California, LA. We went to Denver and Red Rocks. Go back, look at all of the archived shows. Really fun segments. Saturday night segments we have with the disco ball and comedy and so much more. Food and... This is an entertainment lifestyle talk show, so it's something different every night, live worldwide. Thank you very much for joining us, everybody. You are a true blessing. I love having you here from around the world. I love the comments. Willie, thank you very much. It's late into the hour there in beautiful Holland. We appreciate it. Uh, we showed you the flowers early. Er, so here's your Dutch shoe. Uh, <laughs> I know you love this. This is for you, Willie. I know you'll be with us tomorrow night. You're a blessing as well. And um, Ralph says good night as well there in Indiana. And um, more coming in here. Wow. Taking it right to the top of the hour. Good night, everyone. Have a great day tomorrow. You as well. I enjoy again there in the Netherlands, Willie, 3 a.m. Well, you take care. Love you all. Issy in Barcelona loves it as well. Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time. Till next time, as always, I toast you and you and you and you and you. Thanks for being with us. We'll be here tomorrow night. Wow, my hair is getting long, long. Got to get to that hair salon soon. Haven't been to one since March. Got to get there. They were closed for a while. Got to get there soon. All right, gang, love you all. Thanks for all of the great comments, all the love, and we will see you tomorrow night right here on the Gym Masters Show Live. It's going to be fantastic. Another great show is in store for you right here exclusively. And again, tell the uh, neighbors, tell the friends, tell the family about the show. Spread the word. We love having you here. Have uh, watch parties. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well at Gym Masters TV. And uh, like the Facebook page at Gym Masters TV. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Gym Masters TV. All right, we got to go. We don't have chili, but we have dinner waiting over there too. So it's time to eat late night. Take care, gang. Love you all. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, thanks for watching. Good night.